Hi, in this video, we'll try to understand how to use transistor as a switch with Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, before we jump on to understanding how to use transistor, it's important to understand why this discussion. In this course, we are trying to understand how to create embedded systems and IoT based solutions using Raspberry Pi Pico. And so why transistor? What's the use of it? Now, you know, one of the important aspects of any embedded or IoT system is ability or capability to switch on and off certain devices. It may not be the need in every situation, but if you are, let's say, making a coffee vending machine, you need to switch things on and off. If you are basically making just a data logger where you read from sensors and log onto internet, then you don't need switching capability. However, it's important that we should understand the switching principles that are used in generalized all embedded systems. Now, if I consider Pico or Pico W, or for that matter, any other microcontroller as well, be it ESP32, STM32, be it Raspberry Pi, computer, and the whole family of all those affairs. We know that when you use a particular pin as GPIO, in most latest microcontroller and computing devices, the logic one output is always 3.3 volt and logic zero is zero volt. If you go a certain years back and if you choose any AVR series or PIC series microcontroller, then the only difference is instead of 3.3 volt at the max what you have as logic one output is 5 volt. Now the problem with these voltages is they can only turn on and off certain very small low current and low voltage devices like LED, buzzer and uh, honestly I cannot think of anything else apart from LED and buzzer. Because the current output capacity of this pin is also limited in most cases to 10 milliampere or 15 milliampere. With this current, you cannot turn on anything uh, beyond LEDs and buses. So, let us assume that if you want to turn on and off something, what do you do? You can use or you, you may want to turn on a lamp, a fan, an AC or let's say for coffee vending machine, a wall, solenoid wall to turn something on and off or a heater or a stirrer motor and there are many many such devices and appliances that you may want to turn on and off. Now they will be definitely categorized as either AC appliances or DC appliances. Regardless of if you are using AC or DC appliances, you need a mechanism to amplify this voltage so that you can switch something higher. So for the context of this video, we will try to understand the DC switching. Let's assume that the load is DC and let's see how we can turn it on and off using Raspberry Pi Pico's output pin. For this assumption, I am taking, um, let's say, an example of a lamp. Okay, a torch lamp. Now a torch lamp operates on 12 volt DC and ground. So when you connect it, the lamp glows. Now let's assume that we need to turn this thing on and off using the output of Pico W. As stated before, with 3.3 volt logic output, we cannot do that. So what we do is we make use of something called as a transistor to perform the switch. Let me show you how to do that. So transistor is an active device and for this purpose what we do is we make use of an NPN transistor. Look at the circuit that I am trying to draw here. So instead of connecting the second point of load directly to ground, you connect it to the collector terminal of a transistor and you connect the emitter terminal to ground. Now transistor is an active device, it's not a passive device and it can switch on, it can flow large amounts of current from collector to emitter if you give it some base current. 
So this is the kind of circuit we need to create. This pin goes to the GPIO of any device like Raspberry Pi Pico that you are using. The register value should be selected smartly that you do not allow more than 10 milliampere of current to pass through the base of transistor. So I is equal to V upon R. Here the V is 3.3 volt. You have 330 ohm resistor roughly translates to 10 million. Now let's try to understand what happens here. When you make this GPIO pin go high, the base to emitter and base to collector junction are forward biased and the collector current flows from 12 volts through this load towards emitter and to ground. In turn, the load is on. When you make this pin low or zero volt, the forward bias of base to collector and base to emitter junction is now stopped and it completely switches off the junctions and essentially your load will turn off. Now, what are the limitations here? Then? The limitation is the transistor in itself. A normal transistor like BC547, which is the cheapest and simplest transistor you may get, is rated to give not more than 200 milliampere of collector current. But does it mean that we are restricted to 200 milliamperes? Definitely not. You can use a high current transistor instead of the normal ones. You can get a 1 ampere transistor if you want to switch a higher load. You can get a 5 ampere or 10 ampere transistor if you want to switch higher. Furthermore, you can also use a MOSFET. <laughs> So, you connect the load like this to MOSFET, VS to its drain and then the source goes to ground and the gate can be given to GPIO. With respect to the MOSFET, the good thing is you don't even have to connect the resistors because MOSFET is a voltage controlled, transistor is current controlled. So, this is the essence, this is the basics of transistor switching. I'm not saying you will need it in your project, but definitely it is worth understanding how this switching is done. Let's switch back to presentation again because we do have some schematics here. So you can use NPN or PNP switching circuits, but primarily when you are using the switching circuit or creating the switching circuits, it's best practice to use the NPN transistor for simple applications. And let's consider you have a case where you want to switch on multiple devices, not just one, two, three, four, but five, six, seven, eight, or more than that. In such situation, using a transistor may not be good for your <coughs> for your PC board or circuit board and the complexity of it. So, in that case, what is done? Some proper switching ICs are used, like ULN two eight zero three. This is particularly useful when you are switching more number of relays or stepper motor or seven segment displays with a microcontroller device. Let's see how the circuit scopes. So this is the circuit for switching on and off a DC load which we have just understood using a simple NPN transistor. You can connect this resistor to any of the GPIO pin, make it high and low and your DC load will accordingly switch on and off. The consideration is make sure the transistor you use is of a proper current treating. Next, as I spoke, there is this switching IC available, which can be used when you want to switch multiple devices. It's called ULN2803. If I want to switch on eight relays or eight buzzers, bigger buzzers or eight bigger lamps or any such large appliance like number of different motors or a stepper motor, seven segment displays. Then using ULN it's simpler. It's not that you cannot use transistor but ULN simply makes things simpler because all you have is simply the input to be connected here and the output to be connected over here. So the circuit with ULN goes like this. So this is an example for stepper motor but let's say for example the lamp itself if I have to understand then VS, then you connect your lamp over here and then the second point will go to pin number 18 for example 
and pin number 1 can go to Pico W's GPIO. This pin should go to ground. This pin should go to VS because it provides you with internal clamping diodes and this clamping diodes helps to properly shut down an inductive load like a relay coil, like a motor. Now, as soon as you make pin number 1 high, the load connected to pin number 18 will be grounded in turn making it on. As soon as you make pin number 1 go low, the load will simply turn off or shut down. And you can use every channel individually. So you can use pin number 1 and pin number 18. We can use pin number 2 and pin number 17, pin number 3 and pin number 16 as a one particular switch and on and on. If you consider the number of pairs here, so you have a total of 8 switching pairs available. So you can switch on and off 8 appliances at the same time individually without affecting each other. And UL in 2803 is a high current driver. It provides 500 milliampere per channel. So each channel can give you 500 milliamperes of current. So this is how UL in 2803 is used for switching. <clears throat> I'm not going into finer details because as and when needed, we can utilize them. This is a common schematic which is used when you want to interface a unipolar stepper meter. In a unipolar stepper meter, we have usually five pins. One of them goes to the supply voltage. For the simplicity, five voltage should. But if your ULN, or oh, sorry, if your stepper motor operates on 12 volt, then you should connect 12 volt here. Or if it operates on 24 volt, then you should connect 24 volt over here. And the four coil points goes to pin number 18, 17, 16, 5, 15. Essentially, four output pins. And then those four input pins goes to the common or general purpose input output pins. In programming, what you will do is you will make use of these pins as output pins and then you will make them 1 and 0 accordingly how you want to turn on or how you want to rotate the motor clockwise, anti-clockwise and by changing the sequence, you can control the speed of the motor as well. So this is the transistorized switching. This is useful for DC loads to summarize. You cannot switch on AC loads using a transistor or MOSFET. Just simply can't, okay, because uh, as I said, it's an active device. It will only flow currents in one direction, that is this one, and not in any other direction. Moreover, if you try to switch AC devices using transistor, it will damage the transistor, it will damage your Pico board, everything. Just you will observe a blast of BIP and everything will be over. So please use transistor switching circuits only with DC circuits. In the next video, we'll try to see how you can switch on relays using transistor. And relay is something that you can use to turn on and off an AC appliance or AC device. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.